Lori Campbell, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Ms. Campbell, let me ask you, first of all, with the announcement of this latest uh, withdrawal from the inquiry, what was, your, what was your thought when you heard about this? I think my thought was just there's a lot going wrong there, and it's really unfortunate. I mean, we've had over the last couple, almost two years, um, a long line of people either getting fired or leaving, uh, resigning voluntarily. And you know, like well over a dozen, and that is a significant amount that would indicate that something is wrong within the inquiry itself. What is your understanding of the mandate of this inquiry? Um, I think that uh, I think that there's kind of two different things or two different sides of of what's being asked. I, I believe that the families, the needs of the families, are what would be most important. And uh, what their direction is saying is that they're, you know, looking for things that are Indigenous informed, uh, including ceremony, cultural practices, and and uh, inquiries coming coming from sort of this uh, colonial model of uh, status quo, deficit based, and looking at commission deadlines. And I think they're kind of uh, just missing the mark on each other on on uh, what is hopeful to come out of it. But isn't this is supposed to find out why there have been so many missing and murdered Indigenous women? Right. And I think I think we already know that. I think, you know, I that's what I mean when I say it's coming from a deficit based model. I, f I feel like the inquiry is going to have the tendency to look at sort of pathologizing indigenous people. So sort of thinking of them as sort of psychologically ab abnormal or unhealthy and can't take care of themselves in some way, shape or form, which rather than investigate the systems that are allowing this to happen, such as the RCM and the police and the endemic racism that uh, basically decides that Indigenous women's lives are worth less than non-Indigenous people's. But isn't it therefore then a, a kind of a problem in, inherent to this inquiry that the police are not part of the, the equation? They're not yeah, invited. I th yes, I think that is a significant problem. I mean, the families, of course, want to share their stories and uh, need to have an opportunity to share their stories, but I don't think they're just sharing them just to be heard. They're sharing them because there are still family members that are missing and they want them to be found. They want perpetrators of the victims to be held accountable. They also want other families to not have to go through through this, and, and they themselves do not want to have to go through this again. What, what do you think should be going on here, though? Because this inquiry has had criticism almost from the very outset. I think, um, I think moving forward, I th I believe it just really needs to be Indigenous, grassroots-based, informed. And although, you know, some of the families that have uh, been at the hearings are, are feeling um, satisfied with uh, their experience of it, I think that's important to recognize that. But I think it's also important to recognize that the diversity of Indigenous peoples across this country, from East Coast to West Coast to North to South, is tremendous. And therefore, each hearing and uh, the way that it's been going about will have to change based on the individual and community needs uh, where the inquiry is headed. Now, a lot of Indigenous groups have, have been a part of this criticism of this inquiry, uh, calling it some pretty serious uh, names, you know, it's a f farce and, and, and worse, perhaps. Can it do its job? I mean, should, should the director, should the head commissioner be relieved of her duties and uh, reset? What, what's your thoughts on this? I, I think that, uh, I, well, I think there's something significantly wrong in there. And with so many people having left or being, been fired, and many of which who I think are trusted community members and who have worked really hard within the inquiry to try and move it forward in the, and to meet the needs of the families. And so I think the trust from the community is certainly depreciating uh, when we see those people who are finally saying, look, I'm, I'm leaving due to personal reasons, and I think the personal reasons have more to do about the stress of recognizing that uh, they're not able to do it in the way that meets the needs of the families and the communities. And um, at this point, you know, there's very few people uh, that have been there since the start, and uh, yeah, so what is the leadership within it? Well, Laurie Campbell, what did you think when you heard about the report that the one of the, the executive director who has just left said, the first priority is to protect the commissioners. Right. Uh, yeah, and there, that's very problematic. I mean, uh, you know, given given the context of the uh, inquiry and, and what uh, the families are, are, you know, hoping to come out of it, I think, you know, account um, transparency is uh, most important. 
And I mean, that's not even an Indigenous uh, philosophy or law or protocol. And, and so that's just indicative right there that it's not following the right Indigenous protocol. Because Indigenous protocol would be that, um, you know, that it's, it's nothing about that. What it's all about is meeting the needs of the community and the families, not about saving face. And yet a lot of people on the executive and commissioners are uh, of Indigenous background. Right. And so, I, you know, that kind of brings me back to uh, my point previously that um, the fact that some of them are leaving voluntarily and some of the ones that have been fired uh, leads me to believe that they're just not able to do things in the way that they know needs to be done in order to meet the needs of the families and communities. And that's why they're not able to be involved anymore. The Commission is likely to ask for an extension and more money, uh, given the political problems involved uh, and kind of, I guess you'd say, embarrassment for the Liberal government. Do you think it's likely that an extension will be granted? Well, I think an extension has to be granted, and uh, because the first, uh, you know, for sure, the first good chunk of it, you know, hasn't been, hasn't done what it's been set out to do. And so mistakes were made. And I think the government and, and the inquiry needs to be accountable for that and uh, continue forward. The process has already started. Um, so there's, you know, there's not really stopping it isn't really the way to go, but moving forward and say, okay, we've made some mistakes here. We recognize that this needs to be grassroots community driven, and we are going to take direction in that regard and continue to move forward until we get this right. What would you like to see happen? I mean, there have been calls again for the head commissioner to, to be relieved uh, and a reset. What do you think should be going on here? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not real stuck on the word reset. I, I do think uh, it's probably not a bad idea to continue moving forward because, again, like I said, there's been so many people that have come off and uh, the leadership is still the same the head commissioner, and so I think uh, there's a problem there, yes. It's not working, and, and I think, um, uh, you know, it's just not working. Can it be saved? I think it does have to continue to go forward, yes. It just needs to be done in a different way, and that's, I think, where we're sort of butting heads, is the colonial system saying that it needs to be done one way uh, and is, is uh, sort of directing it uh, from the inside out versus um, really making the changes that need to occur based on the families and communities' needs. Laurie Campbell, Kinano Skomitin. Kinano Skomitin, thank you.